Jennifer Massey is here. She's a Hunter College graduate and a journalist at the Metro Desk of the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Let's play a little game. Sure. You're in grade school. It's career day. <laughs> Everyone's father is coming up to say what he does for a living. What does your dad tell the class he does for a living? He's a carpet cleaner. My dad is a carpet cleaner. Yes, he was, but the dirt went deeper. Jennifer's loving, attentive father was also a career criminal, a low-level, mob-connected drug dealer from Bay Ridge who served 12 years for murder. Jennifer's attempts to pump her secretive mom for information and her quest to make sense of her upbringing that included being an unwitting fugitive is the subject of her new memoir, Never Tell Our Business to Strangers. He was arrested for cocaine possession. And when you have a murder charge on your record, uh, that's quite a parole violation. You could go back to jail for a long time. So uh, he took my mother and me, I was an infant, and we ran across the country and we were fugitives for five years. Then one day in 1982, the feds came knocking. Uh, when I was five, I saw him get arrested in front of me. I knew it had to be bad. And after dad does another eight months in the slammer, one day dad just walks in the front door and their suburban Southern California lifestyle continues. I was a normal kid. I went to cheerleading practice. You know, I was in the drama club and I had dinner with my parents every night. And my father went to my plays and he read everything I wrote for the school newspaper. When you're kind of living in a cocoon, it was like a homemade witness protection program. Um, and you're taught not to trust anyone outside of it. Um, even now, I still think of them as soulmates, the people who understood me the best. Um, you know, we were buffeted by forces, is the impression I get from my childhood, and the three of us were kind of forming a force field. And we turned to each other in times of crisis. We're gonna make it, we're gonna be okay. They've both passed now. Um, my father nine years ago, my mother in 2006. I decided to write the book um, after my mother died. She was on her deathbed and she admitted to me the last part of the story, which is that my father's career had an unreported body count. That before we went on the lam, he was dealing drugs and one of the byproducts of his job, my mother said, was to bump off people who double-crossed him or owed him money. And Jenny, why are you getting so angry? It was just part of his business. It cast my mother in a very different light. I mean, she was closest to me uh, than anyone in my life, and she was hiding this secret for this man all these years. She let a murderer raise her child. There were no murders that took place while you were alive, is that right? Um, when I was an infant. Oh. Yeah, before the parole violation. I think one of the reasons they ran across the country was they were afraid that he was going to get picked up for those murders. Let's take a walk. Yeah, sure. While you're doing your research for your book, you say you alternately hated, pitied, cursed, and cried over your dad. Yes, What's I did. What's left now? What's the overriding emotion? <clears throat> you know, after a while, I just kind of gave up. <laughs> <laughs> after a while, I just said, you know what, at the end of the day, I'm really most upset over the fact that he died. Because I never, ever discussed my father's prison record with him. And, you know, in a way, it's a missed opportunity. But mostly, I just miss him. Same thing with your mom? Yes. Um, I would come to my mother with everything instead of a friend. My friends didn't find out about this until years later. Um, I kept it bottled inside because you don't tell your business to strangers. They're not your blood. A great deal of your book is spent describing in minute detail uh, your parents struggled with terminal cancer. And it's tough to read. I'm sure it was tough to write. Why go into that much detail? I find that people really shy away from talking about end of life issues. Um, and I wanted to, you know, being the first of my friends to go through this, losing both parents, I kind of wanted to let everyone know what it's like. My friends, you know, my loved ones have said I had to put the book down for a little while because it's, it's tough stuff. Talk about the significance of this park. We're in Carl mm -hmm. Schurz Park on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, after my father died, um, I'd been living in East Harlem for about a year when he passed away. And every time I was grief stricken, I would come here. Then I took to running in the park, and that gave me a feeling of well-being. And that was the way I pounded out my grief, coming to this park and running every night. They were lifelong New Yorkers, except for the 15 years we lived in California. And, you know, eventually I scattered my parents' ashes off the side here into the East River. I didn't need their ashes now. I could carry our history with me. I studied my hands, which resembled my mother's more every day, and understood that I was part of them. I could be their memorial. I had to let them go. 
I'll never forget you, I whispered to the river as I reached back and threw the whole jar into the black carpet of water. But there's a happy ending. Although Jennifer was an only child, her dad had children from his first marriage. And though her father avoided them when Jennifer was growing up... I decided when he passed away that I wasn't going to be like that. You know, I wasn't going to let what he felt cost my relationships with my siblings. And even though they're old enough to be my aunts and uncles, we're still close. And their kids are in their 20s, so there's like a 10-year age difference there, so it's not too bad. And they live in Florida. And, you know, when it's freezing here, it's nice to step off a plane where it's 80 degrees there. And the book is called Never Tell Our Business to Strangers by Jennifer Massia, published by Villard. And you're watching Study with the Best. Thanks so much. Thank you.